November 16, 2007, Captain Simon Mayu had set out near Kandahar when an improvised explosive device ripped through his light armored vehicle. It was a major tragedy, killing Corporal Nicolas Beauchamp, Private Michel Lévesque, and an Afghan interpreter. Simon was lucky to be alive, but he was severely injured. His jaw fractured, his left leg smashed, and ultimately amputated below the knee. Simon went through grueling rehab, got fitted with a prosthetic, and then, despite even his own doubts, he returned to active service in Kandahar to honor, he says, the lives of the men who died under his command. Now back in Canada, one of the first to receive this sacrifice medal, Simon is lending his support to other Canadians wounded in the line of duty through a program called Soldier On. Please welcome to the program, Captain Simon Mayu. Um, you know, what does today, what does today mean to you? Well, uh, today it's a day of remembrance. It's a day where we, we get to pay respects to uh, people that have been here before us, to people that have been to war before us. Um, but for me, it's also a bit per more personal because um, I lost some of my comrades in Afghanistan. So it's always a day of remembering them personally. And well, and for, for, for citizens, it's a day of honoring you as well. And this, I mean, we hear about the sacrifices that soldiers make, and obviously it comes in many different forms, and, and you have as well. Is it an emotional day for you? Oh, every time, every yeah. time. It gets very emotional because it's, it's just when the, this, this trumpet calls and, and there's a moment of silence, yeah. and um, it's a five second, it's a minute where, where you just think about their memories and who they used to be. And, and how great people they could have been, but they, they, they chose to make a sacrifice for their country. With the accident, the explosion, you got ejected, right? Yeah. And that's just by the seating. Do you feel that? I do. Um, just before we were leaving uh, the FOB, the forward operating base where we stage our operations, um, well, the night that it, and my incident happened, actually, we were uh, a combat team going out on a, on a mission to seize territory and I was commanding the vanguard. And my signaler was there. He takes care of all the communications, all the radios and all that stuff. So he gives me the thumbs up, sir, we're good to go. And he goes in. And usually he was sitting up, checking the stuff. I was on the comms inside. But we decided to switch seats for whatever reason so I could be outside and watch stuff. And that's when the bomb hit. And it, it, would it have been a different seating at that time? There would be somebody else talking to you right now. That's something to carry, isn't it? Uh, I, I do. Every time I make a choice of my life, I have to think that, you know, I, I, I have to deserve what they gave me. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't cut short. I can't cut corners. I got to make sure that whatever I do is in honor of them. And whatever sacrifice they made, I got to make up for it. Aside from the fact that you were obviously severely injured and you lost your leg, you went back. To active duty, yeah. you made a choice with a prosthetic limb to make, to go back. Yeah, uh, it, it, it didn't look as a choice to me. Yeah. It was, uh, I woke up in Germany and the first thing you do is you start counting, you know, the limbs. Is everything there and working? And you figure out one is not there, so, but it was tough. There was dark clouds, you start wondering what you're going to do with your life. But I had left buddies back there and they were still doing the mission. So for me, it wasn't really an option. It, I had to go back. What's the process by which you break through the, the, the dark clouds? I used to be platoon commander of an airborne, you know, platoon of, of Kenyan soldiers, the best troops in the world. And I was on tip, you know, the edge of the spear, I was the thing. And then I come back and now I'm a patient in a hospital bed. I, I have a hard time just going uh, eating. Yeah. So this is tough, you gotta redefine yourself, but then don't focus on the moment. You gotta know that, you know, things are gonna come back. You're gonna get a prosthesis, you're gonna get back to walk, run, you know, you're gonna wear your gear again, and yeah, you keep going. You had to be told multiple times that you had lost your leg? Yeah, yeah. Um, my memory, I had a big concussion, and my memory wasn't sinking in. So they kept telling me, I was waking up, and I was like, wow, when my leg is not there, what's happening? And they kept telling me, well, you know, we had to amputate because it was, it was going bad, and, and then I fell asleep again, woke up, didn't remember anything, so they had to tell me about five times, and at the end, they were kind of like, you know, 
you lost your leg again. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, that's kind of mean the way to do say it. It's like, it was the first time for you. Yeah, exactly. For me, it was the first time that I remember it, but they have been telling me for like 20 times. Anthropology time. I'm going to rapid fire some questions towards you, okay? What's the most... Do you watch war films? Yeah, yeah. What's the most honest and accurate portrayal from your estimation? It's a show, Banner Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's, that, that felt like digging a trench there. What is the stupidest, most unintentional movie about war ever? Most of the Hollywood movies, except a few. Yeah. Like, Full Metal Jacket is good, the rest... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when, not if, but when the NHL returns to Quebec City, yeah. will they be the Nordiques or something else? They will be the Nordiques. Yeah? I still have the T-shirt and the cap. You do, eh? Oh, yeah. It's are you, waiting. Are you looking forward to that first game against the Habs? I do, because my dad was taking me to games back then. I'm looking forward to like, my, my daughter to games. When, when the Nordi Nordiques left, did you root for the Montreal Canadiens? I had to. Yeah, it's hard, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, the most, that's the most pained you've looked in this entire interview. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about everything. <laughs> Losing a leg, we can deal with it. But hockey, it gets to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a question for you from over here. Bonjour, Capitaine Mayou. It was so wonderful to have you by my side at Trito Hall, across Canada and abroad. You are such a thoughtful, courageous man, very sensitive to the needs of others. So tell us what makes you volunteer. You know, our Governor uh, General, current Governor General David Johnson is big into this is my giving moment. Of course, Mikhail Jean, Governor General, was very much into this as well. I, yeah. you, you know her. You know, why volunteer? You can watch the news and see another country self-destruct, but I want to do something about it. I just don't want to watch it, make a comment, and turn the page. I want to do something about it. I think it's, it's critical. We want to get involved. And um, the forces allow you to do that. They, they allow you to go across the world and reach people. I mean, I'm not changing foreign policy. I'm not changing the way Canada is. I'm going to help Afghans one-on-one. -on -one. I'm helping villagers to build a school. And that's what it felt like for you? It does, very much so. Okay. That's, that's when you, you actually make a difference. A pleasure to see you. Thanks for your time today. For more on how to honor and remember Canada's veterans, the Veterans Affairs Canada website, which is veterans.tc.ca. Captain Simon Mayu, we'll be right back. Great, man.